Hello, this is Leslie Cohen speaking. I'm the author of Trapped Inside the Story. Trapped Inside the Story is the biography of Holocaust survivor Sonia Hebenstreit. Sonia was born in the city of Lwów, Poland, in 1929. She lost her entire family during the first six months of the year 1942. Left alone and penniless at the age of 13, Sonia developed a unique survival strategy. Her love of fairy tales helped her live through the nightmarish war years on her own. Trapped Inside the Story documents her struggle for survival. Trapped Inside the Story gives Sonia's very unique survival strategy based on her love of fairy tales. It is written from her point of view in the present tense for the purpose of dramatizing. The biography opens with Sonia's favorite fairy tale. And I quote, Once there were two witches who used to hunt children and eat them. These witches had evil eyes, wild hair, and huge fangs. However horrible as they were, the witches loved a little girl named Marisechka, and they would never hurt her. Marisechka had a neighbor, a young boy named Ivasik, who knew all about Marisechka's evil friends, the witches. One day, Ivasik found out that the witches were planning to capture him and cook him in a stew. But on the day the witches set their trap for Ivasik, he was ready. The next morning, Ivasik snuck out of his house and climbed a tall tree in his backyard where he hid, listening to the witches talk. They made a huge campfire under the tree where Ivasik was hiding. There, they feasted on fresh child stew, certain that they had roasted and eaten the body of Ivasik. After their banquet, they relaxed and joked under a tree. One of the witches got up and took the bowl of bones that she believed were the remains of Ivasik. She scattered the bones all over the yard, screaming, Away with you, you bones of Ivasik Kutasik, who is no more! Then the other witch heard a noise in the tree and looked up. She saw Ivasik hiding there. Ivasik shouted to the witches from his perch in the tree, I tricked you! Those aren't the bones of Ivasik, but those of your beloved Marisechka. If you don't believe me, just look under her pillow, and you will see her breasts lying there. Hearing this, the witches were infuriated. Their beloved Marisechka was dead, and they had been tricked into eating her. Wherever you hide, Ivasik Kutasik, we will find you and destroy you, they screamed. However, since the witches had eaten so much, they were too heavy to climb the tree. So with their huge jaws and long, sharp teeth, they decided to gnaw at the tree trunk. They chewed and chewed and chewed until the tree collapsed. Ivasik Kutasik, run from the witches! Ivasik Kutasik, run for your life! Hop from treetop to treetop, never daring to fall, or the witches will eat you for supper tonight! There was another tall tree just next to this one, and Ivasik hopped from the lofty branches of one tree onto the branches of the other. Therefore, the witches went to the next tree and started gnawing at the trunk just as before. When the second tree collapsed and fell, Ivasik hopped into a third tree, which was the last one in the yard. Ivasik thought to himself, When they bring down this tree, that will be the end of me. But suddenly, when the evil witches had gnawed through the trunk of the third tree, it fell on top of them, killing them all instantly. And thus the young boy Ivasik escaped the terrible fate of being cooked and eaten by the witches. As soon as Zoshka finishes telling me the story, I beg her, tell me again. On a good day, 
she puts her head back and laughs so hard that her big, big belly shudders. You can never get enough, can you, little Sonia? Does that mean yes, I ask? And she laughs again. Tell me again, please, please, please. And many times she does. Unquote. This is the way the biography begins. It continues with Sonia's memories of her early childhood and her school days, where she encountered anti-Semitism for the first time. The following excerpt tells of one incident that particularly disturbed her. I'm in third grade now, and our class is putting on a play for Polish Independence Day, the 3rd of May. My teacher tells us everyone will be in the play and you'll all wear costumes on stage. The children are excited. We all want to wear costumes. And we learn a special song for the play. It's by a famous Polish poet. It goes like this. Who are you, my little one? I'm proud to be a Polish son. And what's that eagle on your chest? It's the sign that we're the best. What place do you call your home? Poland is the land I roam. What does Poland mean to you? For Poland, anything I'd do. Would you protect her if you could? With my body and my blood. And are you ready for a war? I'll defend Poland with my sword. What are you willing to give in strife? For Poland, I'd give up my life. I learn the song with the rest of the children, and I sing it at home and at school. I feel very patriotic, and I feel that I really belong here. I'll never forget the words. Our teacher tells us, I've given everybody in the class something to say. The children with a good memory and the ones who speak well in front of the class will get big parts. The others will get smaller parts. But you each have to know your part by heart, so you'll have to work hard and memorize it. She knows I'm a good student, so she gives me an important role. I'm going to be a soldier in the Polish cavalry. I go home to practice my lines, and I tell Zoshka all about it. I read her my lines, and I practice them at home every day, until I know them by heart. I sing her the Polish Patriots song, too. On the day of the play, I get dressed up in my costume, a Polish cavalry uniform. All the pupils, the teachers, and the principal go into the auditorium where the play is going to be performed. Many parents are in the audience, too, but not mine. Father is at home sleeping, of course. I don't know where Mama is. The play is about to begin, and I'm standing close to the stage. Just then, one of the Gentile children in my class, whose father is with him, points me out to his father. The man runs up to me and shouts, Just a minute! You're a Jew! You can't be allowed to dirty the uniform of a Polish soldier! He tries to block my way so that I can't get up to the stage. When I hear him say that I'm dirtying the uniform of a Polish soldier, I start to sob hysterically. I don't know what to do. My teacher sees what is happening and rushes over to my side. Without saying a word, she stands between this man and me and pushes me up onto the stage. With tears streaming down my face, I stand in front of the whole school and recite the lines that I've studied so carefully and with so much enthusiasm. Unquote. Two years after this incident, the Russians took control of eastern Poland. Many things changed. One of the changes was actually beneficial to the Jews. In the following excerpt, Sonia tells of the Russian attitude toward and treatment of the Jews. Near our school, there's a small army base where I go with the other kids after school to watch the Russian soldiers drill. Yesterday, as I was walking home from school with a group of children, a Russian officer saw us looking at him and came over to the fence to talk to us. He had a lot of colorful medals on his chest, and he looked very important. In Russian, he asked us, Children, do you study Russian in school? 
Da, we answered. Sure we do. And do they teach you about the great Lenin? Yes, we answered, all together. Do you like the Red Army, he asked us. Of course, we said. It's fun to watch the soldiers doing their drills at the army base. Then he asked us, Would you like to have a present from the Red Army? Naturally, we all said, Da. The officer reached his hand into his pocket and pulled out a fistful of tiny red stars, the symbol of the Soviet Union. Each one was about the size of a thumbnail. This is your present, he said, reaching through the iron bars of the fence to hand each of us a star. But when he got to me, I hesitated to take the star, thinking that I ought to tell him the truth about myself. I'm a Jew, I told him. Maybe you don't want to give me a present. But are you a good student, he asked me. I nodded my head. The soldier looked at me and smiled. He stuck his hand through the bars of the fence and handed me a red star. Little girl, he said, in the Soviet Union, everyone is equal. The Russians, the Ukrainians, the Polish, everyone, even the Jews. This was the nicest gift that anyone could have given me. As I took the little red star from him, I swelled with pride. I had never heard such words of unconditional acceptance from a Gentile before. I thanked him, Spasiba, and I put the star on top of my school beret and walked home with my head held high, thinking that everybody who saw me would know that I was a worthwhile human being. Sadly, the era of tolerance toward Jews ended abruptly in 1941 when the Nazis routed the Russian soldiers out of eastern Poland and took control. From then on, life became a nightmare for Poland's Jews. Ninety percent of them perished during the Holocaust. Each survival story, such as Sonia's, gives us a unique insight into the horrors of the Holocaust and documents the combination of inner strength, luck, and human kindness that contributed to the survival of certain individuals. Thank you.